Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, wearing my brand new t-shirt of Ren Snippy since my other one that I had since my last Christmas in 2017. But this one, my brother Jason gave it to me along with his wife Tina, so I thanked them for that. I love Ren and Stimpy ever since I watched it on Nickelodeon as a kid, and I really love it. So anyway, I decided to review another peanut special this month. Since I did review the last one a couple weeks back, which is What a Nightmare Charlie Brown. This is actually one of my favorite peanut specials next to all the other ones because I never get tired of it. He's your dog, Charlie Brown. It's the fifth primetime peanut special that aired on CBS on February 14, 1968. It was Valentine's Day at the time. But it was also considered to be the last Peanuts special to feature the entire original cast since their first Peanuts special, A Charlie Brown Christmas. So this is really cool. But this is also the special that centers around Snoopy and going for his mischievous ways. And of course, Charlie Brown's dog was a beagle. And he does a lot of crazy stunts and does everything that an ordinary dog wouldn't do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I I know, I just could I'm starting to feel like I'm going to start laughing already when I review this. But I can't help it. I mean, this is why Snoopy became one of my favorite characters uh, next to Charlie Brown. Because he's always mischievous, and he always loves to do a lot of stuff. You know, like, dresses up as a World War I flying ace. You know, going around, uh, <laughs> you know, pretending like he's under attack, or anything like that. I mean, yeah, plus he gets to be Joe Cool and and all these other characters that he loves to do. And he has a best friend, Woodstock, that hangs around. And he gets to sleep uh, on top of the the roof of, of his doghouse. So he, he can do everything. <sighs> In fact, I started watching this special ever since um, we rented this at the library. Yeah, the Glendale Public Library, or at this rate, the Glendale Central Library, that had tons of VHS tapes to rent. So, like, you get to rent movies, TV specials, and any other. Even all these children's specials that they have available. So, it's, it's like their own video store. But you get to rent them by... But you get to rent them for free by using a library card. Yeah. And they still do that today, though. I mean, even though my library has been remodeled. But we also used to rent movies and TV shows and all this stuff and other video stores. Like Full Throttle, which no longer is around anymore. Uh, Blockbuster, same here. Hollywood Video. All these independent mom and pop stores video stores, like the Video Station, or Star Video, yeah, any, any any other video store we had. We always used to rent a lot of movies and stuff on VHS. <laughs> yeah. But this one, along with the other Peanut specials we rented, and we also later bought them too, and of course, after buying the first of the Peanut specials, I just never got tired of watching this one. I mean, it feels like, man, I wish I could have a copy of this so I can own it and just watch it any time without feeling bored. I mean, after Snoopy's getting married, Charlie Brown, you're a good sport, Charlie Brown. There's no time for love, Charlie Brown, all these other ones. This one just, I just got crazy over it. So, couldn't stop laughing. You know, mostly because Snoopy does a lot of crazy, mischievous stuff. It was amazing. <laughs> so it's Peter Robbins, Bill Melendez, Sally Dreyer, Ann Altery, Lisa DeFaria, Christopher Shea, Glenn Middleson, Gail DeFaria, and Matthew Lipton yeah, as Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Lucy Van Pelt, Violet, Patty, Lions Van Pelt, Schroeder, Pepper and Patty, and Roy. 
And by the way, this was also uh, the second peanut special to feature Pepper and Patty after You're in Love, Charlie Brown. So this time she gets plenty of screen time after Snoopy stays over. <laughs> yeah, it's created and written by Charles M. Schultz, yeah, based on the comic strip of Peanuts, and it's directed by Bill Melendez. The special begins when Snoopy was beginning to get into constant mischief, such as, you know, bringing in his skin diving outfit and swim around Linus's swimming pool, scares him off, and this is at the end. He just screams, "Oh, that dog drives me crazy!" Lucy does the same thing, just when she was reading the Three Little Pigs. And just want to get to the story of the Big Bad Wolf uh, huffing, puffing, and blowing down their house. That Snoopy decided to do the same thing, but just blows <laughs> Lucy all the way into the swimming pool. <laughs> and then he kicks uh, Stroder in the butt and just ran away. <laughs> And that's when he dresses up as a World War I flying ace, battling against the Red Baron, which is a stock footage that's shown on It's a Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, as well as A Boy Named Charlie Brown, and several specials to follow. Until he was attacked by the Red Baron, and then finally lands as he crashes into where you know, Linus and Charlie Brown are, and just pretending like they're the enemies. So he just kicks them, ran away as fast as he could until he was caught by the rest of the Peanuts gang already looking completely mad at what he was doing, and he just went back into his doghouse. And this is where they demand Charlie Brown to do something about it, because after all, he's your dog, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown would later write a letter to the Daisy Hill Puppy Farm because this was the place where he actually got Snoopy from his parents. Well, unlike uh, Snoopy's reunion though, this, this is where they changed the story. But you get the idea. Well anyway, he's asking them to take Snoopy to teach him some manners so that way he'll become as ordinary as all the other dogs would. But Snoopy has a punishment to actually have Charlie Brown call Pepper and Patty to actually have him stay at her house for just one day before getting ready to go to the Daisy Hill Puppy Farm yeah, for a week. And Pepper and Patty agrees. But then, you know, Pepper and Patty is just acting like, you know, Snoopy is just one of the strangest kids that she has ever met. So when Snoopy arrives, you know, she, he decided to spend more time at her house than having to go to Daisy Hill Puppy Farm. So it's almost like this was a great time for him to relax while having some of those drinks, you know, pretending like yeah, he's he's a Taurus and he's always like snapping fingers to see if, if Pepper and Patty will give him so much of, of all the drinks that he can have while you know going on the swimming pool, you know, some bathing and all that, and putting some some suntan lotion. <laughs> uh, Roy also came over. Yeah, that was Pepper and Patty's friend. And Snoopy is just going around eating some cereal and all that. So, Snoopy was just having the best time of his life. But then, the Daisy Hill Puppy Farm gets a phone call from Charlie Brown to find out that he didn't show up. So, because of that, he decided to bring in a leash to take him back home. Uh, and that's when Snoopy just couldn't take it anymore. You know, he, he's acting like, you know, he was strangled and choked by by the leash and decided to just pull the leash from from Charlie Brown and just knocks him over and then <laughs> again acts, acting like a soldier. Yeah. But decided to take out a piece of a rock, acting like it's a grenade, and decided to throw it straight into the wagon where Linus is at, and just scares him off. <laughs> and this is where Linus says, I think I was attacked by an escaping prisoner. 
<laughs> so he just ran away and he wants up inside Schroeder's house, you know, just while well, Schroeder's just practicing his piano, you know, playing all these Beethoven tunes. And he's just going around dancing and snapping <laughs> until he got caught. And then he just went back inside uh, Peppermint Patty's house, and this is where she decided to use him as a maid. So he can actually clean up the entire house just to teach him a lesson. So Snoopy hasn't come for for a couple of days, and everyone was like feeling very quiet. Like everything just wasn't the same without Snoopy. So it's almost like, well, they they knew that they made a mistake, so they figured if maybe someday they might be able to to figure out a plan to bring Snoopy back. So Charlie Brown decided to uh, bring out the leash, so that way he'll be able to bring Snoopy back while Snoopy is just continuing to clean up the entire house, such as you know backwooding. The bedrooms, all the rooms, you know, dusting, sweeping, you know, mopping at the bathroom, also, you know, washing some clothes, you know, all, all these chores that he had to do, which he just couldn't stand. So that's what he had to do all, all day. Um, but Charlie Brown wanted to take him home, but unfortunately, uh, because of the, the incident with the leash, he decided to kick him out. Or at this rate, Pepper Patty decided to uh, take him out. So there you go. And then Snoopy just continues all the way until he started washing all the dishes. And he just couldn't take it anymore. More he started throwing all the dishes and until he was sent to the garage for punishment. And this is where Snoopy suddenly dreams that... Yes, he spotted Charlie Brown actually uh, yanking him with, with the leash. I mean, he also had another dream, too, where, again, he was doing that, and, and he dreamed that he was the devil. <laughs> so he started crying, and this is where he started to howl all the way that causes Pepper and Patty to wake up and go straight to the garage, and then Snoopy attacks her. Yes. He actually attacks Peppermint Patty and decided to pack up all of his stuff that he had with his briefcase. You know, since he did pack it up for just to go to her place and decided to leave at night. And he just goes around kicking the can while everyone else is asleep, all the neighbors around. And then finally he came back home, you know, putting him a, a disguise, <laughs> putting a mustache. And was getting ready to knock um, knock at the door by kicking the foot at Charlie Brown's house. And then Charlie Brown just came. And he was excited that finally Snoopy came home. <laughs> yeah, as all the Peanuts game decided to, to, you know, just to go easy on him this time around. And, and they're just really happy and glad that he came back, even though he's still doing his usual stuff. Yeah, this is when Snoopy uh, just decided to grab uh, Linus's blanket, you know, just, just swinging him around all the way through the trees and just, and just <laughs> swings him in a circle until he fell into the ground. And that, right next to Lucy, and this is where he says he's back. But then, <laughs> but then uh, Snoopy and, and Lucy were fighting, well, sort of like, you know, making love. So, yeah, Snoopy was just licking the <laughs> Lucy, you know, constantly. Just when, <laughs> just when Lucy was about to punch him. <laughs> but she says she surrender, and, yep, at the end, she just says... He's back. So now Snoopy just came back to his Snoopy. So Snoopy just came back to his doghouse. You know, so relieved that he's back home. And he gets to lay down on the back, uh, on the roof of 
of his doghouse. And there you go. Just a fun special to watch, no matter what. It's just hilarious, but it definitely teaches a lesson that sometimes, you know, Snoopy can go completely out of control with his mischief that would cause the entire game to go completely to go completely angry and this is what happens when when you go too far you have to go you have to find a way to and it's such a fun hilarious and awesome penis special that I never get tired of and I always love but it does teach a lesson that sometimes when you get into constant mischief you can go completely too far you know causes the entire penis game to become very angry at him that Snoopy really does need a punishment for a while so that way you know he can act from his uh, disciplined behavior and also Peppermint Patty did teach uh, Snoopy a lesson that having to stay at her house for the entire week instead of going to Daisy Hill Puppy Farm that this would definitely you know definitely shows that you know when you stay at her place you, she's going to end up teaching you to become a maid so having the, the entire house clean you know with all these dishes around and all this other stuff while he was staying so he's not exactly you know the perfect guest that you want to have in your house and I sure learned that too when when I had to stay over at you know, my grandmother's or everyone else's house were as a guest and I had to end up cleaning up the the entire house you know just so everything could be clean and they, they taught me for that too so act like you know you're at your own home so, so yeah but in the end you know at least Snoopy did learn this lesson that this is exactly why you know you won't if you have to keep on doing this stuff you won't be able to go back to where you usually do you know you won't be able to hang out with Charlie Brown and the rest of the Peanuts game so you end up being stuck inside Pepper and Patty's house so it was a bad idea but, but still now Vince Guaraldi did a wonderful job composing the special you know, I, I never forget the Peppermint Patty theme, like do 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 or the other theme. Do 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 yeah, that, that theme. <laughs> uh, also joins in with John Scott Trotter, so he also provided uh, half of the score to to compose. And so this is the first time that Garaudi actually worked together with another composer. And and also some of those scenes alone was also uh, part of. Um, an episode on the Charlie Brown and Snoopy show, uh, which is called Snoopy's Men's Best Friend. So, this was uh, adapted from that part. And then we also learned that in the special that Pepper and Patty does live with her mother, but her mother was never shown. So it's just Roy, uh, her best friend. So, wow. <laughs> That's all we have here. It's also nominated for an Emmy Award for an Outstanding Achievement in Children's Programming. Of course, it didn't win, but it's it was nice to know that it was nominated. So, but it's a fun special, and I loved it. There you go. So anyway, that's He's Your Dog, Charlie Brown, and I give it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.